Chris, how many conversations with Tua have you had about your last college game? Um, there's really not much conversation to be had. I mean, we all know what happened. I mean, it's really not. I mean, what is there to even say? Here and there, I might poke a little fun or, you know, say something here and there. But oh, don't ask Chris. Oh, no, no, yeah. <laughs> see, see. Yeah. So, see, he clearly is still hurt and upset by it. Um, but it is what it is. It was just business, you know, doing what I had to do. So, yeah. You in that introspective question, as, as a thoughtful guy, you, you've always been a, a good player. But you know, as Austin Clark said this week when I talked to him about you, you've taken your game to another level this year. You've been really good. Was there a, a conversation you had with yourself or a thought process after last season where you said to yourself, "I'm okay, but I want to be a lot better. I need to make changes in any way to make me an even better player." Uh, really, it's just staying the course. Um, and that's something I would say to a lot of young guys coming into sleep, whether you have success or whether you struggle or, you know, whether you're good or great, whatever, just stay on the course and constantly find a ways to improve, um, you know, because you're never a complete product. No matter if you have the best seasons of all possible seasons, you know, you still not, you know, you still can be better. Um, and that's something that I just try to do. And I, always, you know, I, I'm a, I've always had confidence with, within myself. I know. I can be, you know, a good player in this league and uh, continue to be a good teammate. So, just I always just try to find ways to, you know, stay the course, stay humble, and stay motivated. You guys obviously are not afraid to have fun in, in the building and at games and everything. But how do you kind of balance that having fun with when it's time to lock in and really get on the game? It's all business. It's always all business. So it's always time to work. Um, but at the same time, I like to have fun when I work. So I try to, you know, keep a good spirit. Um, you know, keep good energy around here. And a lot of guys have that same mindset too. So it doesn't matter, um, you know, what, what we're doing. Just, you know, try to find some fun in it. You know, we're playing a, a kid's game and we get to call it work. So I'm always going to have fun playing this game. But, you know, meetings, whatever else, you know, lock in, be, be a little bit more serious. But when you're out there, when it's time to celebrate, when it's time to, you know, you know, hip check somebody, whatever, chest bump, like, you know, you do those things and you have a good time with it. Speaking of celebrating, how do you critique Jalen Waddle. I mean, he did all right. He did pretty good. I'm still trying to, you know, because uh, he, he gave me some credit. He gave me, you know, the 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 founder, I guess, uh, credit, I guess. But, um, you know, he did pretty good, and I'm glad. I mean, it's a perfect celebration, too. Like, I wish I had a cool-ass name like Waddle or something where I could, you know what I mean? And I've been trying to get him to do it all year, but he finally uh, found the courage to do it. I mean, we've been working on it all year, but he finally, you know, when he brought it out, it was pretty solid. What did you do to convince him to finally do it? Oh, no, I've just been, like, always after he makes a play or just whenever I see him, you know, walking around or something, I'll be like, you know, just kind of do it or, like, just mess with him. I'll be like, oh, waddle, 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 or, like, whatever it is, um, you know, and just kind of putting it in his head, and then he finally broke it out. So it was, it was cool. It was cool. Now he's got to – now he put the league on notice. Now he's got a celebration that, you know, everyone can get behind. So. Steve, when you were going to the, to the field, too, from the sideline, you like, like when you see that they're getting close to the end zone, you start to, like, monitor, because i seen you, you start zooming down to there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, like, I'm on field goal anyway, so I always got to get ready to be able to go on the field for the next play. Um, and, you know, honestly, I kind of got, like, a little competition with the other D linemen, because we track our top speed throughout the game. So that's my opportunity to kind of, you know, get, in, get an edge, get, you know what I mean? So, yeah. What happened with Zach Sealer? Like, Say again. Zach, what happened with Zach Sealer? He was mic'd up. You got the sack, but he was mad because he felt like he should have been on the field for that play. Can you describe to us what happened? No, there? Zach knew what he was doing. He was mic'd up, so he, he he was doing it for the cameras. He knew what he was. No, nah, I'm just joking. That's the kind of guy uh, like Zach is, and that's the kind of like rapport and just kind of like uh, energy we've been able to create on the for the guys on the D line specifically. Like, we don't care who gets it. We're just happy. We're happy for each other. And, you know, it just should, like, like I said, that's the kind of guy Zach is. And, you know, when guys are in or if guys are hot, we have no, not, not enough pride to be like, bro, keep going. Like, you know, it's for the betterment of the team, whatever it is, like, we're genuinely happy to see each other succeed. So that was just another prime example. And there's a lot of love in the D-line room and a lot, of, you know, we got some characters in that D-line room, golly. Um, you know, so it's just, it's just all love in there for sure. One of the metric sites. Uh, has this category called run stops, which is impactful stops against the run. You're very high in that category. Are you pleased with how you've done against the run personally? I mean, I don't really pay attention to all of that. I don't get into all the metrics and the analytics and all that other stuff. I just try to play my game and, um, you know, just be the best I can be for the team. It doesn't really matter, like, 
you know, as long as, you know, because sometimes, hey, I could have the best run game of my life and not make a single tackle. Um, but just taking double teams or, you know, being in the right spot or making the ball fall back to a linebacker or whatever it is. So, I mean, that, you know, that, you know, sometimes numbers can be misleading or whatever. So I don't try to pay attention to it regardless. Just do my job and, you know, whatever happens, happens. So. I asked you one question a few months ago on Tyler Van Dyke. Just had a final mm -hmm. one. Now that the season is done, it's been pretty remarkable what he's done. Absolutely. Have you observed what he's done? Have you had any contact with him since that initial No, I've been. No, I've been paying attention and stuff, obviously, and you know he's been putting on for proud Southfield Academy, you know, proud alum. Um, so he's been he's been doing his thing, and I've been happy to see him, uh, you know, grow and do some good things out there. Um, so that's awesome, uh, you know. And I'm I'm sure I'll reach out to him at some point, or you know, in the in the off season or something, just just hang out, maybe grab a bite to eat or something. But like I said, I've been happy to see him have some success. A quick two-part question. Uh, any friendly banter this week before the game with Dexter Lawrence? And do you keep tabs with the other members of that Clemson defensive line? Were you, you all went in the first round. Friendly yeah. banter. I told him not to talk to me all week. I told him we ain't friends this week. We ain't boys. None of that. It's business. Not, um, it's always all love. Um, and we kind of got to, um, you know, we talk to each other pretty often, at least once a week, if it's nothing but a text message or we got a good little group message or if it's nothing but a silly message here or there, or just like, you know, love you guys, whatever. We always keep in contact with each other, uh, just keep each other motivated and just, you know, updated on each other's lives. Uh, so, yeah, we always, yeah, we, we keep in pretty good contact. But, yeah, I probably won't talk to him as much this week, uh, but until maybe after the game. The game? I already have one of his jerseys, so um, yeah. But you know, I'll definitely chop it up, give him a give him a big bear hug after the game. But for those sixty minutes, it's it's all business. So. Obviously, there's some questions as who's going to be at quarterback on Sunday. But regardless, what stands out to you about how the Giants play on offense? Oh no, they got they they're I mean, they're really talented. They got a really they got a lot of great skill guys. They got a good strong tough old line. Um, so we're definitely going to have to be prepared and have a great week of practice. Uh, I feel like we're going in the right direction with that today. Um, but we're, there's a lot of work to do, and we can't take these guys lightly. Um, we can't focus on anything else just but the task at hand because they're a really good team, and they got a lot of weapons, and um, you know they're, they've competed with some really good teams. So um, we're going to have to put, play our best game this season, uh, this week. So. It wasn't too long ago when you were when you were a rookie. How do you assess how Jalen Phillips and Javon Holland are handling this season with all the success they've had? Yeah, no, it's definitely good to see, you know, those young guys like step up and grow up in front of your eyes, you know what I mean? They're just little babies when they came in here and you know, they didn't know what they were doing and whether they were coming or going with nothing, you know what I'm saying? They didn't even know how to, Jalen didn't even know how to get in a three point stance. I had to teach them all that and teach them how to walk and all that. But uh, no, I'm joking. But it's good to see those guys definitely, you know, uh, be impactful for us. Um, but just continue to try to keep them humble. You know, they have good spirits, they have some want to, they care about the game, they love the game. And it's good to have a lot of those young guys around because they're just excited to be here, you know what I mean? And, you know, they have the right mindset and the right energy. and. You know, it's just good. So, um, and then it's, I'm just happy to see them have some success. And, uh, we had uh, Andrew Van Ginkle out I'm here. Hurt. Van Ginkle was out here a few minutes ago. Uh, what does he bring into this defense, especially uh, the past several weeks? Yeah, yeah. no, uh, Gink is, is a very, he's one of like, you know, the smartest guys I play with. He always, he gets schemes and gets how to play well within our scheme. And he's, you know, he sees things. And whenever Ginks tells me to do something on the on the field, I'm like, yep, I'm all ears. Cause a lot of the time it leads to a play or it leads to us, you know, making a stop on defense or whatever. Um, you know, he's a great teammate and, you know, he can rush, he can, he does a good job in coverage. He's just a tough guy, does a good job on special teams. Uh, I got a lot of respect for a guy like Gink for sure.